Jeannie Laura Downer for Conduit News. And today we have second district chairman, Jennifer Lancaster joining us to talk about a Republican list that was just sent out that has some grassroots members scratching their heads. Hey, Jennifer. Hey, Jenny. Thank you for having me on. Oh, I always love it when you join us here at Conduit. Um, so I really appreciate you being with us. Um, just this week, the Republican Party of Arkansas, as you know, sent out a preferred delegates list to the Republican National Convention. Um, before we dissect that list, because I think it's really interesting to kind of look at it and, and go through who those preferred uh, delegates are, if you would, for those who are watching, walk us through this process just briefly, what this list is, um, how these delegates are chosen, and why it's important. Sure. So there are a number of people who had the opportunity. Well, um, uh, the filing period was open to individuals who could file to be Republican delegates and alternates to the Republican National Convention, which is going to be in July in Milwaukee. This weekend, the congressional districts are getting together and they're going to hold their conventions, wherein they are going to elect three delegates and three alternates. So all those individuals that filed during that filing period will be running. And this is the first time that any of them will have the opportunity to be elected. Now, those who do not prevail this weekend will then be able to run the following weekend at the state committee meeting. So that is what we are looking at here. So the list of all those who filed was submitted by the RPA per the rules to the Trump campaign. And this is where things start getting interesting. So the Trump campaign uh, returned a list the list with some asterisks next to the names of their preferred delegates. So these are, if you will, endorsements from the Trump campaign. Now, people are wondering, well, how are they selected? So I think it's important that we talk about this because people should know that Trump did not have a direct hand in the selection. He did not go through that list personally and say, I want to endorse this person and not endorse that person. This was submitted, again, by members of the RPA um, who have said that they did not indicate preference over any individuals um, over the other. So that list was submitted, and the Trump campaign reviewed it and made their selection. So the question is, was there, in fact, any influence? Well, if you look at the list, it appears that a lot of the people, well, all the people that have those asterisks by their name um, are have been very friendly to the Sarah Sanders campaign. And I would even say most of them, I believe, uh, work for her. Certainly within the second district, the overwhelming majority That's are on district. Yeah, you roll. That is my district, second district. Um, they're, they are on uh, Sarah Sanders, uh, the, the her payroll. So for example, um, uh, we have Brittany Bernard, Deputy Director of Public Affairs, Jordan Powell, Director of Public Affairs, Jamie Barker, Director of Legislative Affairs, Gretchen Conger, um, Sarah Sanders, Chief of Staff, and the list goes on. Um, and so, of course, all those individuals and many appointments have these asterisks by their name. So in the 2nd District, 23 people filed to be Trump delegates. 20 of them have asterisks by their names. Now, the three that don't are grassroots people that are not on the governor's payroll and, and really don't have any connection to her uh, to her campaign. They don't work for her. Um, and so that's where it, it it's very interesting. And so I it, it appears and I believe that the uh, Sanders campaign, an individual from that campaign reached out to the Trump campaign and asked, uh, and at least, if not asked, uh, had some discussions about who they preferred to be those endorsed by the Trump campaign. So the point is, I do believe that this list was influenced by the Sarah Sanders, people from the Sarah Sanders campaign. I did talk to Seth Mays, he's executive director there at the RPA. I just wanted to understand the process uh, more clearly. Um, and he did say, per bylaws, this, uh, you know, this is something that that the party does. Um, it was, again, voted on, unanimously approved um, at one of our last uh, big um, conventions, I believe. And um, he did say, you know, I just simply sent 
the entire list to some of those campaign advisors. And then shortly after we received from that entire list, the cold down preferred version. And so, and I've talked to um, legislators, other people involved, and they say, look, um, we, we hear the message loud and clear. We understand and we see how it looks. Um, but then they also say that um, this is not something, as you alluded to, that um, the RPA had anything to do with, that it was, in fact, more with the Sanders campaign. And so to, to, to place at the feet of the RPA would be wrong. And, and and maybe so. I don't have any evidence that the RPA did anything other than what they've said they did, which was to submit the list without any um, any uh, indicators of preference um, over the delegates. But that still does not mean that somebody outside of the RPA did not then reach out um, to the Trump campaign and asked for certain people to be endorsed. And well, and. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I would also say that, you know, it also doesn't mean that the people within the RPA weren't aware that this third party was making that call. I'm not saying that that's the case or it's not the case. I'm just saying that nobody has made that statement. So it's it's certainly possible that people within the RPA did know that there was a third party making a call and thereby they have uh, plausible deniability. And they can, in fact, just say that they submitted the list. Um, one thing that I'm also hearing, and I've been told, and you and I both know this, this list is not something new. This is not something that's been done for the first time, and it's all of a sudden coming to our attention. Uh, so kind of a two-pronged question for you. Um, you know, one, what do you have to say about that? The fact that this list has always been done. Does it feel, though, um, with this election cycle and with the direction of how the state of the party has been over the past few past few years that maybe this is um, kind of the final straw or a bridge too far for some of these grassroots members. And then two, talk to us briefly about how this is not just isolated here in Arkansas. I've seen South Carolina. I've seen other states right now because we're all kind of on the same timeline. And there is a struggle between establishment and uh, what you would call grassroots or the Patriot movement. And um, so this isn't necessarily just something you need to Arkansas. This this exact topic and struggle is happening right now in other states. Yes. And I'm so glad that you brought that up. So, yes, we are, of course, in a spiritual war. And there is this um, division within our party right now between the grassroots and the more establishment folks that are trying to maintain that status quo. So I think it's important that we go back to our core beliefs and we need to remember why our country was founded and that it is it was founded when the pilgrims came over. They were wanting that religious freedom. They believed that man is naturally depraved and sinful in desperate need of a savior. And they set up a form of government based on that belief that because man is so is sinful and depraved, that no man should therefore have power and control over his peers, right? Because that's where when you put all that power into the hands of a single person, a monarch, or just a few um, elites, that is when that concentration of power in the hands of the few just, it it boils over and it just, it, it's it's pure evil. So when they divided it up among the people and dispersed it among the people, that was just a way to keep that power in, in check. And so we need to remember that as we are going forward, because we don't want to be elevating any one person or small group of people or even, even a party above uh, where it should be. We need to understand that the people are the ones that have the power by design and that we, the people, are the ones that are going to change this country and restore it to the greatness, restore it to its greatness only through God and through his blessing. We cannot be relying on Trump. We cannot rely on Sarah Sanders to fix this country or to save us. They cannot save us. They will not save us. We also need to remember that they are fallible human beings, just like every one of us. And right now, now, as far as this list goes with President Trump, he is he is a, a, a fallible man. He is surrounded by people that don't, as we've seen historically, they don't always have uh, America's 
best interest in mind. They don't. It's their politicians. And so I think this list is an indicator of that. And people should not become demoralized or discouraged because of this list. They need to recognize it for what it is. It's just some people who are engaging in politics that got together and said, hey, will you endorse these folks? And there's some question about whether or not there was a little quid pro quo there, because if we notice the same list that this, the same day that this list was sent to the RPA, uh, the Sarah Sanders campaign released a list of elected officials who were publicly endorsing President Trump. That all happened on the same day. Curious, is it not? But it's just something people need to keep in mind and and not become discouraged or demoralized. And remember why we're doing this. We're not doing this just to get Trump elected. We are doing this to bring glory to God and to restore this country, this Christian nation, to the greatness that it was. That's what I was going to ask you. Just uh you and I both uh, have seen them, the comments on social media. We've talked to the people um, that are involved in these grassroots efforts. And they are. They're discouraged. They feel like this is just something else uh, working against them from the state party apparatus that um, really shouldn't feel like such a struggle. It shouldn't be so divisive. Um, and what we saw in 2020 and in other years, when this exact situation was happening, a lot of patriots left. They quit. And I don't think you nor I want to see that happen here in Arkansas. That's right. We don't. And that's why it's so important to remember why we're doing this. Because if you're yeah. doing it to support, encourage, elevate Trump, you're going to be disappointed. He is going to disappoint you. He is just a man. Um, and just like all of us, he's a sinful man. He's going to make mistakes. He is surrounded by people that are equally sinful. So remember who you're doing this for. And if you're doing it for God's glory and for his kingdom and to expose what's being done in darkness and to speak truth in love, you're not going to be disappointed because Jesus doesn't fail. Uh, Jennifer, before I let you go, I just wanted to run something by you. Um, all of these, the lists, and then the, um, as you know, the RPA um, announced that they'll be pulling the proposed rules number one. All of this kind of is happening around the same timeline. And I couldn't help but think this is a little funny to me. I don't know if that would be the right word. But the point of proposed rules change number one was to remove power away from the county committees where they could not, rec where they could not pass a resolution of do not recommend. One of those reasons that they wanted to have that rules changed, they being people in the party apparatus, elected officials, um, a few others, was that it would um, it would influence people at the ballot box. We don't want to do that. We don't want to influence. We want to trust those those voters in those districts. Okay. Compared to the preferred list that comes out, and again. How they are selected is by vote at district and then it's and then at the state at large uh, by its members. And it was just interesting to me that the preferred list comes out, which I know is according to our rules, bylaws, I get it. But it's like, not only do we want to influence the votes, when you receive your ballot Saturday at your district meeting, uh, we're going to have asterisks beside it just in case you forget who those preferred delegates are. What are you that I'm off? I'm off on this. No, you're not. It is. It's very, uh, very uh, ironic here that we have them telling us, "Hey, don't influence votes," while they're influencing, <laughs> trying to influence our votes, right? So I guess it's okay for the elected officials and for those the the establishment, the elites, but it's not okay for the grassroots to to say anything. And that's the that's the crux of the people's complaint yeah. rules for thee, but not for me. You know, either everybody gets an opportunity to say, we, Hey, we support this person. We don't support this person or we don't, it should be equal across the board. So yes, I agree. It's, it's very, uh, very interesting. We'll put it that it's way. Interesting. It's just something to watch. All right. Well, anything else that you want to add before we let you go? You know, just to remind everybody that Trump is not going to save us. 
Sarah Sanders is not going to save us. We, the people, have to come together. It's going to be us, through the blessing of God, that are going to be able to change this country and restore it to the greatness that it once was. But we can only do that through God. And we have to stick together. So don't be discouraged by this list. Uh, it is nothing more than just politics, uh, again, as usual. And you don't have to abide by it. Everybody is free to make their own choice and vote according to how they see fit. Always insightful and encouraging, Jennifer, to have you on. So thank you so much. Look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you, Jenny.